Well, guys, welcome back to Divinity Original Sin, part three, I think. We're exactly in the same place as we left off last episode. All right, so let's get into town. Ah, who? It's just a case of him welcoming the uh, source hunters that we are. Uh, what can we ask him about Jake's murder? The undead trouble they're having are on the outskirts of Sicile. And the marauding orcs. Which I believe we don't really see much of until I think about level 7 ish. Just updated. So we need to go and visit him in the Legion house. Sorcery, sex, undead, orcs. Looks like we have our work cut out for us. At least we won't be bored. How about we go see that Aureus chap Ahu mentioned? There we go. Well, one thing we have to do first of all as soon as we get into town... ...is deal with this. We have two rain schools, so let's use one of those. And there we go. Not sure we've saved anything anything worth using, but we've, we've saved the ship. Although it'd be a, a burnt out wreck. Right. Check this basket out while we're here. Now we can't get that chest yet, which the game will point out to us. Can't reach. Really the greatest warriors in Riverlone can't cross a rope. Yes. We can't cross a rope. We can't even attack it in Murray Island. No. But we can use a teleport, I think, at a later date to get it. I think I might have to turn some of those uh, options down a little bit, I think. Uh, audio. Voice. Music. Take that down a touch. Zoom. All right, we need to speak to these three sailors. Our home, our livelihood, all sunk in a matter of minutes. While we could do naught but look on. Tell me about yourselves, the merchants, and the ship sunk. Nothing to do. It's the orcs and the slinging of fireballs that did it. So the rascal is basically to find them a job. Journal updated. There we go. We need to find them a job. Uh, nothing to do with these guys here yet, I don't think. Ah, uh, there we go. Check that out. Recipe unlocked. Dust to dust. Right, oh, has to create fine pixie dust by the sound of it. Alright, put that in order. All the stuff to sell we've got here. Alright, let's head uh, into the centre of town, I think. No, oh, one more thing we have to do first, sorry. Where is it? I did give the pet pal to that to, to Jules, didn't I? 
pay labor is more suited to my nature, anyhow. Yes. Honest pay, honest day. I'm sure it is. Where is she? Come here. There she is. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, tug my tail and call me Bessie. <laughs> a two feet addressing me directly. I thought I'd never see the day. Tell me a bit about yourself. Me and my brother Bull will be dragged to this here cart around Sizey over from Dr. Graveyard and back again. And he tells me his brother is a uh, clairvoyant. I'm seeing two feet approaching me, gasping at you, oh, yeah, he's really clairvoyant. Will I be wealthy? Why, yes. Will I be lucky in love? You must reconcile your mistakes before you find true love. How will I die? Hmm, death. Ever the most difficult topic to foretell. Uh oh. Doesn't want to tell me anymore, he's seen something not nice. Right, let's go in here. I've got a feeling, guys, that this episode will be mainly running around the uh, the town, talking to people and probably gathering um, our compatriots together. Right, who's that there? That's Horatius, that's Florius. Oh, he's a bit bad tempered, this fella, this Horatius. <laughs> uh, calls his mate Loose Lips McGee. <laughs> Come on, an idiot man child, oh dear. He suspects Esmeralda and the Butcher, second. <laughs> now, we're about to tell him that uh, Horatius called him Loose Lips McGee. <laughs> hey, off he goes. See yourself tall, guys. Right. Next. <laughs> Talk to this lady first. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. You can obviously pause the video, guys, if you want to read all this. I don't think there's anything that really uh, I need to read there. Right. Now this guy wants me to convince his mate that not orcs are predators. So this guy's used uh, a love potion on the orc, and he thinks he's going to stay that way. But I can tell you, 
from past experience that she doesn't. <laughs> And if you don't put her down here and now, you come back here later on and she has gone and she's killed the guards. So we're going to... Uh... Agree with the guy that wants to put down. Bye. And there we go. Bye bye, Mrs. Hawk. I mean, I feel a bit guilty for, for getting her murdered, but... I mean, I didn't, she was only kill those later on. You find that a lot with this game, that sometimes your decisions you make, you make them for the best reasons. Either being kind or generous or... Wanting somebody to survive and it ends up being the worst decision you've ever made. <laughs> right, well we're not going out there yet. We don't need to go there, so let's go into the centre of town. to be heading to the market area here, I think, first. If we head there, then I can get rid of some of this junk that I'm carrying. Whoa, 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 missed it. <laughs> oh, I discovered the waypoint anyway. That's handy. Yeah, here we go. This is the market area. The hub. Right, we'll talk to this Captain Jack first of all, because we can clear a quest off this. Get him to tell us about ourselves. His crew ran off. So, obviously, what do we need to do? Ask him about his crew, and then do you have any work for sailors? There we go, send them to him, Bye. and he'll look after them. So, again, we'll update to the shipless sailors. He agreed, so all we need to do now is go back to the dock and tell them. Right. Now, the first thing I want to do is the... get to a point where we can recruit characters, dismiss them, and then they can go back to our, our base. But in order to get our base, we have to interact with the Starstone. So first we'll talk to Theoron. That tells us about his apprentice. A revolutionary healing method. Ask about the sailors, but no, there isn't anything. So, Jake's murder again, pointing the uh, the finger at Esmeralda, his wife. Okay, I'll take my leave. 
Interesting indeed. Nothing sets me on edge like inexplicable magic. There we go. Rather, Tillman suiting a corpse is troubled. Uh, excuse me, there's a private room where who in the name of the seven do you think you are barging in here? Out I say, right this instance. Tell me about yourself. And she goes on to explain this bit. It's the task that's making her a bit edgy. She has to choose between these two people. She has a healing stone. Which one should she choose? Right. So we ask about the patients, Boris. Looks like he's been uh, clubbed by an orcish club. And Stephen. Uh, that looks like we just got some mail. Right, so Boris's life just begun. He's the he's the youngest of the two, obviously. We've got Stephen. Should receive the stone. We all fell. What difficulty of growth? Of, hang on a minute. I'm going to have to stop this a second. <laughs> right, I'm back. Sorry about that. It was just the mailman putting mail through, driving their dog crazy as usual. Right, so basically here we've got a young guy, Boris. We've got an old guy who's got grandchildren, Stephen. So who do we give it to? Well, I go for giving it to the, the young lad that's not experienced anything in life. Give him a chance. So we'll go with that, shall we? So we'll deliver the stone. I'm glad we'll get to save one man, but my heart breaks for the other. And ouch. <laughs> well, <laughs> and here we have zigzags. By the quill at last a billion words, what's this? What are you doing here? Where the very stars come to die, who are you and where have you come from? Who am I? Who the devil are you? No, 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 we find ourselves at the terminus of time, but ask you first. And it's only courteous to provide an imp of good and honest standing with the answer he desires. Then we say about approaching a strange stone, blinding light, and world is away. A stone. And it gives a description of what it is, and it sounds pretty good. So, the star storm, and it must be. For centuries it slept in this bounty of the heavens, but now it is waking, and it has brought its awakeness here. Always dark and always still, as it always has been and always would be. Or so I thought, so I feared. But then the runes around me began to shimmer, shine and dance like a fair winged fairies roused from slumber. Starstone, could it be the key after all? And you it's wielded? Things of light to unlock things of darkness? Lead us into realms forbidden where salvation may yet be found. <laughs> and it would be great if you start making sense right about now. So he wants to look into the uh, telescope. Or, uh, let's have a look. And ooh dear, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Some kind of abyss. And now it's activated a portal. We should go in. I don't think there's anything in here we need to uh, get. No, bottle of beer, bottle of wine. We can check his desk, I suppose. No. Alright, let's go through the portal. Where in the world are we? We are not in the world at all. Oh, 
And this is the last chest to ask you to uh, get out into the world and find his sisters. There's four of them, I believe. He's explaining to us basically about the maelstrom and the nothingness that is the the maelstrom that we saw through a telescope, which is swallowing everything, including time. Explaining that he zigzags a historian. And he thinks the star stones are the answer to the uh, the problem with the maelstrom. And he's saying he can't talk to this lady, the weaver of time, so we need to do it. And she begins to speak, which is apparently something she'd never done before. So she weaves the events of time into the tapestry. And it appears that we are not on it. For some reason, we are outside of time. And when we appeared, she started to weave new threads. There's some kind of link between uh, ourselves and the Star Stones. And this place is on the precipice of nothingness, at the end of time. This is where she tells us this is actually the first time she's talked, so... That's why she was a bit slow at first. The plot thickens. We should tell the in And this is the, really the start of our, our quest. We've got the quest in the town, which is the, the murder, which brought us to Seal. But this is the main adventure. To find star stones and stop the end of time. And now we can quick travel here. Alright, so this is basically our homestead. Uh, each room that we find, it will unlock a room. And we need to find one more to unlock the room that allows us to send our unused companions there. And why did I just do that? Well, I should have just clicked that. I'm going to Sicil North Gate. <laughs> there we go. So since we're so near, 
to the Legionnaires headquarters, we might as well go there. Uh, we'll stop in here first. So here we are with the cook. Well, isn't that a bug? Never noticed that before. We're actually in the in the cookhouse here, and this cook is chasing a chicken round. But it appears that the text has got mixed up. This is zigzags <laughs> telling us about the uh, the weaver of time that he can't talk to. <laughs> Our answer is, isn't a chicken isn't the chicken's destiny to be eaten? We should catch it and give it back to the cook, which. I agree with it at this moment in time. There we go, and he kills the chickens so these legionnaires can get fed. Have a quick word with him. There we go, Cook Morris now. <laughs> there we go. Are you joking? I've been mauled! I'll be disfigured for life! Oh, come on with the dramatics. It's not as bad as all that. The face, Perius! She bit me in the face! Look on the bright side. Everyone knows the ugly soldiers are the most ferocious. Ugly will be the least it. The beast looks rabid. In that case, you'll have the pleasure of putting her down yourself. I wish for you to try it, Screech Woman. Oh, the beast speaks. So you've half a brain behind that feral maw, have you? The cretin's question crossed her lips and aped an ear of aptitude. Hey, Tull, I think that was an insult. Don't pay attention to the beast, Virius. You'll only encourage it. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure we can get it yet. I think I need to speak to Aho first. We'll do that, we'll come back, because that is our first companion there. You don't think Bear it's daughter. affected, do you? Oh, come on now. I pulled her off you before she could do any real... Right. We'll talk to Mr. Aureus, the bad-tempered bugger that he is. Greetings! Oof. This is Captain Aureus, who is the leader of the Legion in Seal. You can't understand why everybody's in uproar about the uh, politician that snuffs it. Tell us to go over to King Crab Inn to have a look at the scene of the crime. So we'll be doing that uh, probably next episode. Again. Esmeralda is up there on the list. He needs some help with the undead. Sailor's looking for work, but he's not interested in that. The bravest of the brave went out looking for the source of the undead. That's his legionnaires, of course. So that's a lighthouse, burial mounds, the old church, and they're areas we need to go to. So that should have updated all this. There we go. Three new quests. One dead scourge. Four mysterious murder updated. And our journey is updated. Alright, so we just talked to uh, our hull. Who is now a cat? It appears that he prefers the uh, the form of the cat to human. He likes his polymorphing. Oh, 
And while I've got him facing that way... Let's have a a quick sneak, shall we, and do some searching. And when you're sneaking, everything goes black like this. You can take what you want, basically. But you see how it changes colour there? That means that if I went in that area, that is line of sight for the uh, the object. So then I would not be able to take things. Oh, look at all this we're getting. We'll take that book to sell. Empty portion flask. Yes, we'll have that. What's in there? Nothing. Ink pot. We'll take that. Secrets of the scroll. We'll take that. Parchment. Magical lock scroll. We need that at some point. I don't know why I took the cooking pots, but I took it. I'll come round here and get the painting of a pig. He who smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> he who smelts it, dealt it. Oh, I said that wrong then, sorry. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Cooking pot, one handed hammer. Ooh. Yeah, I can get around the bike. Take these. Right. And we'll go back to the conversation. <laughs> We're asking if it's dangerous to pull him off as he does. Now he goes on to tell us about the night of the murder. That woman arrived in the King Crab. She was joined by a man who had been nursing the same cup of wine for hours. And he says man or woman, but he doesn't really know because they, they were both cloaked. And no one recognised them. So obviously we need to speak to the landlord, because the landlord plucked up courage to enter the mystery room. Where he did, he found that Jake there dead. Subjects. Esmeralda, of course. Doesn't know anything about the strangers in the in the in there. The orc problem. Bye. And that's it. Bread there, we can take that. Nobody can see us, so if somebody could see us, then we would not be in the uh, stealth mode. Nothing in those. Come out of there. Look on the bright side. Everyone knows the ugly soldiers are the most ferocious. Luckily, will be the least it. The beatings. And this is telling us how she uh, came across Baird Tour. I don't, really don't know how to pronounce that. I'll start calling it Baird, I think. <laughs> she tapped her on the shoulder to see what was going on and she lunged at her. Took a chunk out of her face. <laughs> so they locked her up. Uh, not decided what to do with her yet. So if we say perhaps we're taking the stranger under our wing, And there we go. We have bird a tour. Bye. Have a quick word with her. I'll, I'll read what bird a tour needs to say. I saw Sandra. I heard the tales of both grand and terrible about the world of the humans. I myself was caged one moment and freed the next by. Your, our kind. 
In home forests, every creature acts according to the nature of its kind. Birds frighten easily, badgers fear little, but among men, there are no guarantees. So we basically get the choice here to say how unpredictable a species humans are, which we are. And so we're a source of great beauty, of much despair, and all of it uniquely human. Or we could warn her to be wary. I'm going to warn her to be wary of us. Because we are, we're not, we're not a nice species, are we? Let's have it right. So she agrees she'll be wary. And joins us. On the bench there is her ball. And a dagger. Alright, so let's quickly equip her with those. Got a tour. Oh, I didn't give it her. I put it to all grey. Send to Bard a tour. Send to Bard. I'll send that over and well, just in case it's better. I doubt it though. Nope, both 18 to 30, so she can equip that, because she's going to be a ranger. Uh, jewels, well, I can go to all grey. All grey. All grey. Just keep that. Send that to bar. Old grey, you can keep that. Another recipe unlocked. About using needle and thread. Those boots would embarrass a bridge troll. Get your shining recruit. Sorry, sir. You think that's funny, Frank? That's too old grey to sell. Sort those. Alright, so I think Bardatur is going to be our uh, thief, sneak kind of thing, so I'll we'll send that lockpick to her. She's going to need all the arrows. And type. So, to that out. so we will leave it there for this episode, guys. I'm sorry it was mainly just running about the town and getting one new companion. Next time we'll pick up the other three companions, I believe, that we can get. So until then, this is All Grey, signing off, and thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you like the videos, please leave me, leave me a like and subscribe. It's always very helpful. Cheers, guys.